What's going on everybody? Eric Barassa here and today I'm going to teach you Joe Satriani's new song, Pumpkin. Uh, Pumpin'. And to get started, let's tune down a half step. Alright, so now that we're tuned down a half step, uh, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, E flat, we are ready to get into the intro riff to this song, which is funky. Uh, so here we go. Here, it's like this. Okay, so what we've got going on there is basically it's E minor pentatonic, but we're tuned down a half step, so E flat, right? Uh, we're going to do five to seven hammer on on the sixth string, and then a chukka, and then five, seven hammer on on the fifth string, and then another chukka. Uh, and then a little quarter step bend at the fifth fret on the fourth string. Now, when you do a quarter step bend, uh, almost nobody does the quarter step bend instantly. It's usually, it's like, there's a little delay to it. So that's really important to get that feel. And then we just resolve to E on the uh, seventh fret of the fifth string. Okay, so. And then the second half, kind of the same thing. Just open string six twice and staccato hits. So there's going to be a rest in between, right? So all together, slow. Faster. And you're going to play that riff three times. Um, what I experimented with doing is uh, trying to go... Um, <laughs> doing palm muted opens and and that what that didn't sound right also he's got some kind of like an envelope filter going on uh as as an effect with the riff as well as as a clean tone is what it sounds like to me i don't know for sure let me know in the comments below if i'm wrong but i think it's an envelope filter uh okay cool so then uh, the bass line kicks in, and the bass line is just like kind of crazy. So I was like, I don't know how to, how to do this. So I reached out to my good friend Carlos Shalinski and asked if he could help me out. And uh, he said yes, so Carlos, take it away. Hey, what's up, Eric? It seems like the bass line goes like this. All right, and thank you, Carlos. You are the best. So while that bass line repeats over and over, um, Satriani plays, a, uh, a, he uses his pitch axis theory, right? Which is where he has kind of the same repeated bass note um, with changing harmonies over top. And so you end up changing keys with these changing chords, but the root note never changes. So as best my ear could figure, this is what I came up with, right? We've got this low E or e, e flat, really. And then here's our first chord. And then our second chord. And then our third chord. And then our fourth chord. Let me know if I'm wrong about this, because I really racked my brain trying to figure out what are the exact notes that he's using here. But uh, basically what I've got is starting on the fourth string, we've got 11, and then on the third string, 9, and then on the second string, 9. With that low open E underneath. So this kind of gives us like um, E major, really, is what's going to happen when we're improvising, uh, or C sharp minor. I'm thinking E major, really. And then 11, 10, 10. Um, but what's weird is he's still going to continue to use E major pentatonic over this. I don't know why it works, but it does. And then 11, 11, 11. And then back to that 10, 11, or 11, 10, 10. Uh, let's pretend we're in standard tuning. You're going from E major pentatonic. It might be easier to think C sharp minor pentatonic to D sharp minor pentatonic. Uh, I think that's probably the easiest way to think about it, even if that's not it really what's happening. Um, and then for the last chord, 
we're in E minor pentatonic. Um, okay, so those are the chords. Now let's get into the lead parts. Oh, and on those chords, you want to do like a whammy bar dip. Um, I don't have my whammy bar employed for this one, but when you when you do that first chord, you want to do a dip with it. So it's like wow. So it's at, right when you hit the strings, you want to depress the whammy bar and then release it very quickly. And that's how he's getting that effect. And then in the second measure of each chord, so it's like one, two, three, four. There's a second guitar in the background that's being hit more forcefully, uh, just repeating that, that chord. Okay, so let's do the first half of what I would consider the verse of this song. All right, so I've got the rhythm tabbed out almost perfectly for this. It may be slightly off by a quarter of a beat or, or like um, a sixteenth note of a beat, but I, I think really you're going to see that the rhythm here is pretty dang accurate. Um, so what we've got is a three-beat rest at the beginning of the verse. We've got one, two, three... Okay, uh, that's really just like, you can think C-sharp minor pentatonic box one. We're, we're just in there. And again, that with that quarter step bend and then a quick rest after it. And then when the, the chord changes to that second one, we're gonna go one, two. Okay, so we've got a pre-bend at 11. So you're gonna pre-bend a half step meaning you're gonna already have the note bent and then and then release. You can also slide from a half step above. But I think I like the pre-bend. So that's what's happening over the second chord. Then over the third chord, we get, ah, uh, hold on, I gotta hear that again. Okay, so that's what's happening there. And the way I've written it, um, it didn't. I couldn't quite get it to sound right when I tabbed it out. So you, you might have to play with it, but you're definitely bending up to that 13 and releasing um, three times. So. One and two. Okay, so putting all of that together over to this first chord. Second chord. Stay in the same key. Third chord. Now we change to D sharp. And then fourth chord. Now E minor pentatonic. Okay, all right, so C sharp minor pentatonic. C sharp minor pentatonic again. And then D sharp minor pentatonic. And then E minor pentatonic. Right? Okay, that's kind of what's happening there. And in my mind, that's the easiest way to organize it. So for the first two chords, C sharp minor pentatonic. Over the third chord, D sharp minor pentatonic. Over the fourth chord, which is really the same as the second chord, E minor pentatonic. All right, cool. We've got a little pattern there. Second half, we're going to move up, and we've got this. One, two, and three. That's over the first chord, and you can see that's all E minor pentatonic, um, but we're really up like in box three. Okay, uh, so then over the second chord, still staying in E minor pentatonic. One, two, and three. And then over the third chord, we've got... What would that be? That's really like E minor pentatonic as well. And then our last chord, we're gonna bend the 22nd fret a full step. And I only have 21 frets in this guitar, so I'm gonna bend one and a half steps. Oh, 
Okay, all right. Let's see if I can put that all together. Okay. All right. Cool. So here's what's what's happening uh, there. That's kind of the whole second half of the verse all put together. And then um, at the very end, we have this extra measure of a super Hendrixy thing, which is just this. You're gonna hit low open E, but um, you got to do your whammy bar dip, which I'm sorry I'm not demonstrating right now. Wow. Right. Right when you pick, depress that whammy bar and then immediately release. Okay, so a, a Hendrix thing that, that he Hendrix did a lot was if this was our E major chord here at the 7th and 9th fret, then you could do this, um, going from 9 to 11 on the 5th string, and then you'd have... That kind of thing there. So Satriani is is uh, just just playing that, right? We've got uh, this grace note hammer on from nine to eleven, and then uh, double stop nines, and then back to the eleven, and then grace note. We got these two nines on the fourth and the third string, and then you're gonna hammer on to eleven on the fourth string. But that third string nine needs to continue ringing by bending your index backwards. And then same thing when we go back to the fourth and fifth strings. And then I wrote slide down from 12 on string six. It doesn't really matter. You can slide down from anywhere. It's going to kind of sound the same, okay? So that takes us up through uh, like about 105, 106 in the song. And then we have a, 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 a synthesizer solo, which is really cool. Um, and then we get into back into some more crazy guitar stuff. So I'm going to come back with part two and transcribe the rest of uh, that second solo as well as the outro riff and the rest of the song. So we're going to do the song in two parts. Um, this kind of gives you about the first half of what you need to be able to play Pumpkin, Pumpkin, Pumpin by Joe Satriani. Uh, we always say Satriani, but uh, he always says Satriani. So I'm, I'm going to take his word for it and say it's Satriani. After decades of mispronouncing it, I'm trying really hard to change it. So, all right, guys, I've been Eric Barassa. I hope this has been helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.